I'm taking you on a trip across Canada. We're gonna see the West Coast, the Rocky Mountains, the prairies, the Canadian Shield, and the Great Lakes. We're gonna go all the way over to the East Coast. And I want you to sit right here as we go on an adventure across Canada. Welcome to the prairies. Look at these prairies, guys. Wow. Aren't the prairies gorgeous? Look at that nice sunset over there. It's about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock. Yeah, I think it's about 10 o'clock in the evening right now. And uh, there are a lot of mosquitoes out here. Just take a look inside my SUV. I just stopped to, uh, to use my drone to take some drone footage. And take a look at all these mosquitoes. Can you hear them? That sound is called uh, the drone. You can hear that sort of that, that noise, that buzzing noise that's called the, the mosquito's drone. Which is interesting because I just, I just flew my drone right now. Just took some nice shots of the sunset and the nice prairies. It's just so, so calm. You know, one thing about the prairies that I don't know how to explain is the air. The air on the prairies is just amazing. It just smells so, it smells so fresh and, uh, you know, it, it sort of smells like crops. I don't know, I don't know how I can explain that to you. It just sort of has that, has that smell of like a farm and uh, fields, you know, um, like the, the air in the mountains is really fresh too. You know, I mean, most of Canada has really fresh air, but uh, I don't know, the, the air on the prairies in the summertime, it's sort of warm. It's it's not too warm. It's, I mean, you can see I'm wearing a jacket right now. So it's a it's kind of cool, but it's, it's sort of warm at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. Can you hear those nice birds? You can hear birds and maybe some frogs in the grass and other insects, crickets, grasshoppers. It's just, it's just peaceful. You know, people who live on the prairies are usually really nice people and they just, they just want to have their own life. They're really independent. You know, people who would live in an area like this, they just have a, a nice farm and just sort of mind their own business. And they, they just really like, they just really like peace and quiet. You know, and, and that's what you get here on the prairies in Canada. You get just nice peace and quiet. But there are a lot of mosquitoes. That's the downside. Well, better get back in my SUV before I, <laughs> before I get eaten alive by mosquitoes. All right, we're just rolling across the prairies here. Look at this nice place. Really flat highway. You know, the highways here in Saskatchewan are just flat. You know, you can just see for miles and miles. You know, every now and then you see some rolling hills, but you know, for the most part, Saskatchewan is just really flat. It's the it's the flattest province in Canada. If you come on a highway like you can see here, I mean it's just uh, it's just so flat and straight. Right, the road the road is just straight for as far as you can see. So that's pretty cool. You know, you just see some some uh, farms, some fields. You know, we're driving beside the train tracks here. I mean, that's it's really what Saskatchewan is about, you know, just just a lot of farmers here. You know, the prairies, um, there are three provinces in Canada that, that are considered the prairie provinces. Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Okay, right in the middle of Canada, that's uh, it's called the prairies, the prairie provinces. And uh, 
the prairies are different from the rest of Canada in a few ways. I mean, one way you can see it's, uh, it's just flat, so the landscape is much different from the Rocky Mountains and, and different from Eastern Canada, but it's also different in the culture. You know, the people, the people here on the prairies are, are just sort of, how do I say it, like small town kind of people, really nice, nice people, right? A lot of them are farmers or ranchers, or they live in small towns, and they're really friendly people, usually. Um, you know, I don't know, the culture, the culture is, is a bit more relaxed here on the prairies, and it's more, uh, it's a lot more conservative. Okay, so it's it's politically conservative. A lot of the uh, the conservative politicians in Canada come from the prairies, right? The current leader of the conservative party is Andrew Scheer, and he's from Saskatchewan. And our last conservative prime minister, Stephen Harper, was from Calgary. Calgary, my home city. So yeah, a lot of the the people here on the prairies are really conservative. You know, they believe in, in low taxes, uh, limited government, freedom, you know, personal responsibility. You have to work hard and take care of yourself. You know, you can't rely on the government to take care of you. The government shouldn't give, give everything to people. People need to work hard themselves and succeed. So that's, uh, that's sort of the, what the culture is here on the prairies. And... Uh, also, people like listening to country music, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't know if people in BC or in Eastern Canada listen to country music, but here on the prairies, a lot of people really like country music. Maybe they don't have country music in your part of the world, but uh, yeah, people here on the prairies like like listening to country music, and uh, yeah, they're just they're pretty nice people, you know. If you ever if you ever need help with something like. You know, I'm driving across the highway, I'm driving along the highway right now, and if I were to have problems with my SUV and stop on the side of the road, I'm sure people would stop and, and help me. Or if I run out of gas, I'm sure, I'm sure people would, uh, you know, they would help me. They would drive me to a gas station, or they might even have gas in the back of their truck. That happened, that happened one time, actually. I was driving along the prairies and I ran out of gas. <laughs> uh, I was lucky, a nice guy. In a, in a pickup truck stopped to help me and he had some gas in the back of his truck and so he just, uh, you know, he just, just gave me some gas for free and, uh, you know, wished me all the best and, and I was on my way. So, so the people here on the prairies are really friendly. You know, they sort of have that, that community, a nice community feeling, you know, where everybody sort of helps each other even though everybody's supposed to be responsible for their own life. I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but, uh, but yeah, if you want to find nice people in Canada, you'll find a lot of really nice people here on the prairies. Yeah, I mean, just really small towns here. Take a look at this town. We're coming up to a town here. It probably, I don't know, might have 50 people. It's very common for the towns in, in Saskatchewan and on the prairies just to be really small, like, like 20 people, 30 people live, living in a town. You know, there might be a few families, uh, maybe one store, a church, and, uh, and an elevator, a grain elevator. Maybe I should stop here at this town I'm coming up to and show you what a grain elevator is. A grain elevator is a, is a place, it's a building that stores grain uh, right near the train tracks and then when the tr so the farmers bring their grain to the elevator they sell their grain to the elevator and then the, and then the elevator you know moves the uh, the grain onto the train and then the train takes it across Canada I don't know where it goes from there but uh, it goes somewhere and so yeah maybe uh, let's see what's the name of this town here coming up to a town called Rulo Rulo. All right, uh, I think I'll stop here and show you this this elevator, what an elevator is. All right, take a look at this. This is a grain elevator, a grain elevator. Okay. Not like a normal elevator that takes you up and down in a building. This is a different kind of elevator. 
Okay, it's just a, a big building that stores grain, like I said, and uh, so the farmers, I mean, you can see all, all this, right, this area, this is all farmland. So farmers, you know, when they harvest their crops, they, um, you know, often they store the crops in granaries. A granary is like a building, let's see, I can see some granaries over there, and I don't know if you can see them in my GoPro, but the farmers store the grain in their granaries and then they and then when they want to sell it they sell it you know and and they take it here and then you know the the grain gets gets transported from here uh, onto trains right you can see the train tracks here so yeah that's uh that's how that's how it works here on the prairies just uh you just farm your crops then you sell them and then the, the crops get distributed around Canada and maybe around the world. Hey, maybe, maybe you're eating bread that's made from, from Canadian crops. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's just beautiful sunny day here on the prairies. You know, the prairies are a great place except for in the winter. In the winter, the prairies are freezing cold. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's astonishing and, and really windy. Very often it's windy. Today I'm lucky uh, because it's hard to make videos on windy days because the audio is always so bad. Um, but yeah, today's not too bad, so I hope you can hear me okay. And uh, yeah, so it, it gets really windy here on the prairies. And I don't like the wind and I don't like the cold. It gets just extremely cold. You know, we're talking like minus 40 degrees sometimes or more, maybe minus 50 degrees, you know, here on the prairies in the winter. So. You know, in the summertime, it's great, but in the winter, it's it's not so great. Um, but you, you, know, you need to make a decision for yourself. Personal responsibility, right? Um, you know, if you want to live on the prairies, go for it. But uh, if you don't like cold weather and wind, uh, maybe you should consider BC or some other part of Canada. Anyway, let's keep going on our trip. Ah, just drinking some water here because I'm in a place called Drink Water. Look at this. Look at the name of this town. <laughs> the name of this town is Drink Water. Hey, you should join me. Get yourself a, a glass of water and join me in celebration of the town of Drink Water, Saskatchewan. Mmm. Ah, <laughs> isn't that a funny name for a town? Just a little town. I have no idea what the population of a town like this would be. You know, maybe like, uh, maybe a hundred, maybe less, maybe 50. You know, there's just a, just a few houses, just a few houses here. I don't even know if it has a store, you know. It's not far from Moose Jaw. Uh, I just came from Moose Jaw and we're going on our trip over to Manitoba. But uh, I just wanted to stop and show you the funny the funny name of this of this uh, town. There's a big semi there. Yeah, just wanted to show you guys the name of this town. Drinkwater, Saskatchewan. Hey guys, I'm just outside of town right now and uh, I can't remember the name of it. I forget. I forget. Look at this! I'm outside a town called Forget. Look at that, that town over there is called Forget, Saskatchewan. Isn't that funny? That's the name of the town. Hey, where are you from? Uh, I'm, I'm from Forget. Forget, <laughs> that's just, that's such a funny name. That's even funnier than Drinkwater. Drinkwater, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan has some really weird names. Moose Jaw, Forget, Drinkwater. Anyway, hey, take a look at this nice field here. Look at this canola, right? These nice yellow fields are, uh, are canola. Look at these canola plants here. So anyway, I just wanted to stop and show you guys the name of this place. Let's keep going on our trip. I'm a murderer. Look at that. Look at the front of my vehicle. I murdered two butterflies. Wow, take a look at this huge tractor, guys. Have you ever seen a tractor that big in your life? 
Well, here on the prairies, you see a lot of these big tractors. Look at this here. Look at those tires. Those tires are massive. Look at that. But not as big as the dump truck in, uh, what was that place? Sparwood, BC. Remember those tires were, were uh, about twice as big as this. These are only about as tall as me, a bit taller than me. Those were on the dump truck. They were like way, I think they were like twice as big as me. Hey, look at this. This tractor doesn't even have tires. It has, uh, I don't know what is, what is this called? A track? Tracks. It runs on tracks. Look at that. Almost like a tank. Wow. It's really big. And take a look at uh, these things over here. These things are called augers augers okay so they take the grain they uh they sort of move the grain from a place like on the ground up into a truck okay so that's how you get the grain up like that it it, it augers it up okay so yeah these things are called augers and uh what else can i teach you about you know i don't know much about farming <laughs> but um but yeah, if you come onto the prairies, you'll see a lot of tractors, a lot of farm equipment. Like, uh, what's this over here? See this thing here? I think this is a disker. I don't know, I think it's called a disker. But uh, I might be wrong. Take a look at that. Okay, look at, look at that thing there. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, just wanted to show you guys these big tractors and uh, let's keep going on our trip. Hey guys, just stopped off here at uh, Cal Tire. I've been having some issues with my, my vehicle brakes. When I put on the brakes, um, my whole car shakes. So I thought that's not good. I should really get that checked out before I keep going on my trip. So right now I'm in a town called Weyburn, Saskatchewan, and you can see my, my SUV in there and they're they're fixing the brakes so they're replacing the the brake pads and the brake rotors so it's going to cost me 700 dollars to get that fixed but um i you know i it's better to be safe than sorry wow it's a loud truck driving past right there anyway you know i still got a long way on my trip out to the east coast so i thought it's better to be safe than sorry i should just get get my brakes fixed now and uh and then I don't have to worry about it for the rest of my trip. So I'm just waiting here while they fix my SUV. That's nice. I only have to, to wait here for maybe a couple hours for them to do that. You know, a lot of other places you'd need to, you know, to, to book an appointment and then stay the night somewhere. So I'm lucky I don't have to stay the night, spend money on a hotel. I can just uh, just wait here and, and until they're, they've finished fixing it and then uh, I can keep going on my trip over to Manitoba. So, $700 poorer today, but uh, it's okay because I have a nice car and I'm feeling all right today. Feeling not too, not too bad and uh, the weather's nice, so I'll be good to go uh, very soon. Welcome to Friendly Manitoba. Friendly Manitoba, that's, uh, that's Manitoba's tagline. Friendly Manitoba, I guess the people here must be pretty friendly. So we just crossed over the Saskatchewan Manitoba border. There was a little sign on the side of the road, uh, not a big sign like was over in Saskatchewan. So I just stopped here uh, to, to show you this area, the border. Take a look at these things here. Okay, look at these oil rigs. They're pumping oil out of the ground. And you see these things all across the prairies, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Okay, you can see two of them here, and there's another one over there. I've seen probably hundreds uh, just today driving across Saskatchewan. Okay, so take a look at these things. They're sort of strange looking, aren't they? But uh, yeah, they're pumping oil out of the ground. Isn't that cool? Anyway, let's take a look at the map. Uh, so I can show you where we are, where we're going today. And uh, yeah, this is, well, this is the prairies, Manitoba. We've just come out of Saskatchewan and I'll show you here, okay? So these are the prairie provinces in Canada, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, okay? So the, 
you know, the, the landscape is, is kind of the same, you know, in these three provinces, right? It's the prairies, there's a lot of fields, a lot of farmland, cattle, you know, other farm animals, okay? And then right over here, when we, when we cross over here into Ontario, the landscape changes quite a bit, okay? So when we get over here to Eastern Manitoba, it's gonna change quite a bit, you'll see, okay? So now we're almost finished going through the prairies. We are right, uh, well, we came from Moose Jaw, and now we've just crossed over here, and we are going to a place called Souris. Souris, Manitoba, okay? So I'm gonna grab a sticker, and we're gonna stick a sticker onto the map. I don't know exactly, but it's probably about right there. It's where we are, okay. Is that sticker gonna stick on there? Okay, well, look at that. We're almost halfway across Canada, right? I'd say halfway is about, <laughs> yeah, about right there. So, so we're almost halfway across, wow been exciting so far it's about been about uh, 15 16 episodes I think this is number 16 so it might take uh, I don't know 30 40 episodes to go across I'm not sure but anyway I just wanted to show that to you guys and uh, let's roll the dice while we're at it because that's our custom here on this trip all right what should I do today whoops maybe I should uh, I don't know I've run out of ideas Maybe I should just roll it today like a normal person and see if that brings me good luck. Let's see, maybe the oil rigs will give me some good luck. All right, ready? Here we go. Yes, like. All right, Manitoba has given me good luck so far. I've had good luck on the prairies. Whoa. <laughs> All right. So let's keep uh, going on our trip and when I get to my motel, I'll give you a little tour of my motel room like I usually do, okay? So here we are in Manitoba, friendly Manitoba. Take a look at this sunset, guys. Isn't that spectacular? Wow! The colors are so vivid. It's like orange and purple. Man, look at this nice river here. This is just such a gorgeous spot. You know, the sunsets on the prairies are some of the nicest sunsets you'll ever see in your life. I mean, how could it get any better than that? I hope you guys have a chance to come here to the prairies, see some nice sunsets. Yeah, that's just gorgeous. You can hear the insects and the birds here right by the river and these nice plants. Look at these nice flowers here, blue flowers, yellow, all different kinds of plants. Wow. All right, guys, I'm just checking into my hotel here. All right. Well, it's dark. There we go. Got some light. All right, not bad. Let's see. We got a sink and we have a bathroom. Nice. Everything looks good. Hey, there's me. I look a bit sunburned. I got some sun. Sun is bright here on the prairies. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Two beds. Wow, two queen size beds. What am I going to do with two beds? I wish I could rent one of the beds out. Hey, would you like to rent that bed for 50 bucks a night? <laughs> so I'm paying, I'm paying 75 bucks a night for this room. This was the cheapest one I could find. Yeah, about, uh, yeah, it's 75. That's sort of the normal rate we've been paying, right? About sort of anywhere from like 60 to 80, 90, around somewhere in that range, that's normal. So, looks pretty good. Got a TV. Hope I can watch some sports. Wimbledon is on right now and uh, some soccer. Copa America finals, Women's World Cup finals. So, we'll see what happens with that, but uh, yeah. Looks like a fairly typical hotel room. Got some coffee there and uh, that's about it. A nice painting on the wall. Yeah, well, welcome to Friendly Manitoba. Mm -hmm.